Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome and thank you for attending our webinar, Maximizing Career Success Through Strategic Volunteering. I'm Lisa Cook, Senior Director of Career Services, and we're pleased to bring you this webinar as part of our Social Change webinar series. We will be discussing how volunteering can change, create positive social change and contribute to your career development. We are very pleased to feature on this webinar Dr. Bill Schultz, who will discuss Walden's latest social change initiatives, and Dr. Tanya Howard, a Walden alumnus whose volunteer interest led to her directing a nonprofit organization in Atlanta. So before we get started, I would just like to briefly introduce our Walden University Career Services Center team. So there are five of us full-time professionals located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Our mission is to prepare our learners to navigate career transitions through educating, coaching, and advising them. Here's our career services team, and actually we have, um, our whole team has been involved in this webinar this evening, so I'd like to introduce them. So Associate Director Dina Bergren on the to um, top left will be one of our presenters this evening. On um, the top right is Angie Lira, who has helped with marketing and designing graphics to support this program. And then Nicole Skalski on the bottom left is um, providing technical support and pushing the slides for this evening's webinar. And then Denise Pranky on the bottom right is um, also one of the presenters. So it's been a whole team effort. So really pleased to be able to bring you this um, collaborative effort this evening. So now I would like to introduce our panelists. So first of all, um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Bill Schultz. Welcome, Bill. How are you this evening? I'm doing fine, thanks. It's real exciting to, uh, to have everybody with us tonight. Excellent, thank you. Um, Dr. Schultz is the Director of Academic Initiatives at Walden. He supports the de development of initiatives to provide unique and effective action-oriented educational programs and services that help our students make a tangible difference in their communities and organizations. Bill was previously a core faculty member and associate dean at Walden. He has served as the secretary of the Institute for Behavioral and Applied Management and was a past chair for the United States Association of Small Business and Entrepreneurship's Entrepreneurship Education Division. I would also like to introduce a Walden alumnus named Dr. Tanya Renee Howard. Hi, Dr. Howard. How are you this evening? I am doing fantastic. I'm really excited to be here. Great. We're so glad to have you. Dr. Howard is a Walden PhD in public policy and administration alumnus with a rich background in the nonprofit sector and a deep passion for volunteerism. She started her nonprofit career in 2003 when she transitioned from a part-time volunteer position to a full-time volunteer coordinator role. She is currently the Director of Volunteer Services at Open Hand Atlanta, a nonprofit that provides medically appropriate meals for individuals living with chronic and terminal illnesses. Dr. Howard is responsible for the strategic development, management, and execution of Open Hand's Atlanta Volunteer Program that engages nearly 10,000 volunteers annually. She is also the owner of Altruistically Yours, a consulting company purposed to guide nonprofits to create stellar volunteer programs. In her spare time, she volunteers in a number of roles, including president of the Council of Volunteer Administrators for Metro Atlanta. So with these introductions of our wonderful panelists and presenters this evening, I would now like to hand it over to Dina Bergman to cover our objectives. Thank you, Lisa. The objectives for our program tonight are to discuss Walden's engagement in social change, explore how volunteering positively impacts your career, and identify potential volunteer opportunities that are a good fit for your goals. So first, we are going to launch a poll to get some feedback on what prompted you to join us here today. Please select your number one reason for joining us, and Nicole will help us launch a poll. Is it I would like to support Walden's social change mission? I am looking to gain new skills and experience through volunteering. I am or will be seeking employment opportunities or other. So let's take a moment to make your selection and Nicole will share the poll results with us. 
Okay, Dina, we'll give it a few more seconds. It looks like about 65% voted. Great. And we have some ties going on here. <laughs> okay, I'll let it get up to 90. And it looks like, here, I'll go ahead and share the results. It looks like 43% want to gain new skills and experience through volunteering, and 38% will be seeking employment opportunities. So everyone came to the right place, and 13% I would like to support Walden Social Change Mission, and 6% other. So thank you all for sharing, and you came to the right place, because we're going to be giving you lots of ways to gain new experience through volunteering, and hopefully employment opportunities out of the volunteer. So we're going to be sharing lots of stories. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. And now let's take a look at the global impact of volunteering. Volunteering contributes to large-scale social change in countries around the world. And according to the 2015 State of the World Volunteerism Report by United Nations Volunteers, more than 1 billion people volunteer globally. The Bureau of Labor Statistics also found that 62.6 6, million Americans volunteered through an organization at least one time between September 2014 and September 2015. Now, let's explore what we know about the Walden community. Many Walden students are actively engaged in our university social change mission. Walden University's mission is to provide our diverse community of professionals with the opportunity to transform themselves as scholar practitioners so that they can effectively affect positive social change. And a recent student satisfaction survey indicated that our students have a significantly higher rate of volunteer, volunteerism, 60% as compared to the national average of 39% for all college graduates. Now, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Schultz, who will share social change initiatives that are currently being supported at Walden. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. I am a member of, of what is called the Walden Social Change Working Group, and we've been tasked this last year in helping develop a, a broad and deep plan that will help move uh, Walden even more aggressively into supporting social change efforts that range anywhere from volunteering, which is what we're talking about today, to complex community-based uh, research projects. So the project we're working on is called Walden 2020, A Clear Vision for Social Change, and we're outlining a five-year framework that we're proposing to the board of directors and our senior leadership that will help us enhance it and deep, deepen our commitments to advancing both the uh, scholarly understanding of social change as well as the effective practice of positive social change. We're very excited about this. It builds on the momentum that we started with a special emphasis with our e accreditation uh, back in 2012 that went so well. And uh, we're excited uh, to have that um, plan ready for presentation to the board here in July. As part of that plan, we have uh, four major goals, really, that we're considering. So we'll move to the next slide. There we go. And really, this is, this is about being inward focused so that we can be more effective at supporting our students, alumni, and communities. Uh, so we're hoping to raise the social consciousness and skills of all of our people in the organization, the, our, our students, faculty, staff, um, uh, administrators, etc. We want to strengthen the impact of our curricula and we're working on a process by which we'll really be able to evaluate and we hope build far more practical experiences into the curricula, especially for those students that want to want to take uh, uh, social change within the classroom to the next level by offering service learning versions of certain courses. Uh, so we're working on that. Uh, we're looking to build networks. This is a great start tonight uh, in, in working with our students and alumni and others. Uh, we, in general, we're, are looking to perhaps, uh, we hope, uh, have the approval for uh, building a center for social change at Walden. 
that would really be a hub for networking opportunities around the country and the world uh, for doing both volunteerism as well volunteering as well as as research and and practical projects and we're hoping to uh, continue to support um, our our reputation and quality as thought leaders in social change providing high quality volunteer and curricular based learning services is really part of the plan uh, and is part of the plan that I'm particularly involved in and uh, part of that is being able to talk about what Walden means when we talk about building skills to be an effective agent for social change um, which includes being a volunteer so let's move to the next slide and review, review that briefly so we really see and this these this finding really comes it's really not a huge aha moment but it comes from us about two or three years of research in exploring both the literatures uh, on social change as well as a lot of qualitative research talking to all of our constituents inside Walden and others outside uh, to try to figure out what do you really need to, to to be good at to be an effective agent for social change and it really comes down to one essential attitude and seven individual level skills which then you bring to the table with other people who have complementary skills as volunteers and as as folks working in, in organizations to as an organization as a group of people dedicated to a common mission moving forward and those those seven skills are here for you to look at uh, some of the critical ones in, involve being able to think, think systemically and and helping you know ultimately it's idealistic but ultimately we, we would like some of our volunteering organizations to go away because we're able to solve the problems that they're they exist to solve so we want to think of social change in systemic ways we want people to 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 reflect upon what they're doing and what they've learned and what who they can help to actually practice uh, which is what you're doing as volunteers executing plans and bringing what you know into action collaborating working with others advocating or raising awareness of needs and then stakeholder engagement and civic civic and political engagement to help shape policy move systems so you can kind of see how these things can interrelate and then of course the big attitude is a commitment to ethics and promoting the good of others including the world around us in general um, so when we think about these sets of skills it's uh, uh, I think important to be able to look at exemplars at examples of people who do this I'm real proud to recognize uh, our, our uh, uh, Chu Vang, who is a, a leader at Walden, uh, he works with Walden, but he's a leader in, in, in establishing a wonderful organization, uh, the HAEF, the Hmong American Education Fund. He started this uh, nonprofit organization and has really led uh, phenomenal growth for it. We have our own um, uh, Denise, uh, Denise uh, and uh, uh, Dina work uh, with uh, Chu on this initiative and he received his award uh, as the Walden Employee Social Change uh, Award back in 2015 so uh, we're real we're real proud of that uh, and uh, I'll pass the the baton thank you Bill um so, um, Dean, I'm briefly going to just introduce the next slide and, um, and pass it back to you. Um, and so uh, we, as part of the Social Change Working Group initiatives, we are going to be hosting a Social Change Networking Hour on Thursday, July 21st from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. And as Bill mentioned, we are really excited to involve the whole Walden community in our efforts. And so we're inviting students, alumni, faculty, and staff, and they will be connecting via live text-based chats and virtual booths. And we will have six social change topical booths plus one open booth. So our topics will include corporate social responsibility, poverty, social justice and discrimination, environmental issues, 
crime and health. And so we really um, highly recommend and invite you to participate in this because you'll have an option of networking with numerous members of the Walden community just in an hour's time over your interest in social change. So it's going to cross over the whole spectrum of different academic and career fields because it's going to be focused on social change topics. So we're really excited about that. So now I'm going to hand it to Dina who's going to discuss how volunteering strengthens employability. Thank you, Lisa. And the Corporation for National and Community Service conducted a large scale 10 year study with a sample size of 70,000 using data from the U.S. Census Bureau and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And they found that people who volunteer have a 27% higher chance of finding employment. So let's take a moment to reflect and why people who volunteer are more likely to find employment opportunities. Please share your thoughts in the questions box. And Lisa will share some of the student feedback surrounding this question. So why do you think it is the case that people who volunteer have a 27% higher chance of finding employment? And Lisa, do we have any um, feedback coming in, to, in the questions box? Yes, Dana, we have. Um, one right. student said, I volunteer already, and I'm looking for ways to leverage opportunities um, to gain more experience, to gain networking opportunities, to meet people who may be hiring, to gain um, diverse skills, acquiring experience, um, facilities networking, um, a lot of networking uh, answers here. Um, so my skills become known. It shows the attitude that we need um, to show that we have a support of social change. Fill in gaps in skills. Um, I will appear more balanced and social to supervisors. Um, okay. Uh, also, I will gain connections at the place where I will be volunteering. I will get recognition. I will show my dedication and commitment. I will do purposeful work. Um, I will build a wider network. I will have, um, it'll show intrinsic motivation. Employers will view me as loyal and concerned for the wider community. What a great response. Excellent. 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 And also learning ways um, of what you like to do and what you don't like to do, and also gaining current references. Um, and finding out about paid opportunities before they're posted through networking within um, organizations. So uh, thank you everyone for your feedback. And next, let's take a look at the impact of volunteering from the employer's perspective. So based on the findings of the Corporation for National and Community Service, Deloitte Corporation decided to survey 202 human resources executives on the impact of skills-based volunteering for graduating seniors. And their findings indicated that 81% would take skills-based volunteering into account when evaluating a job candidate. 76% said skills-based volunteering makes the candidate more desirable and 65% believe that volunteering benefits their employees. So next, I'd like to hand it over to Denise, who will expand upon strategic volunteering. Thanks, Vina. So what do we mean by strategic volunteering? Strategic volunteering is volunteering that allows you to gain skills and experience and learn more about your strengths and what you enjoy. It also allows you to build connections, as was mentioned by many of you, and to develop stories of accomplishments and achievements that you can share on your resume, your CV, cover letter, portfolio, on social media, including LinkedIn, and also during interviews. Next, we're going to take a closer look at these um, areas. So the skills and experience that you can gain through volunteering are endless. But a few examples that cross many disciplines include public speaking and presentation skills, technology, 
communications and social media skills, project management, training, and leadership experience. Volunteering also helps build professional connections, as you mentioned. Building your professional network is one of the strongest steps you can take towards a successful career. Volunteering offers the opportunity to build relationships, ask questions, and get advice from professionals in your field. Also, you have connections to go to for references and referrals. And then remember to use social media sites like LinkedIn to stay connected. While you volunteer, keep a journal of your experience and achievements to highlight on your marketing documents. So let me pause and let Nicole catch up with the slides here. So we want to be on the tell your volunteer story on your resume. So one more. Thank you. So here's an example of the volunteer experience of a forensic psychology student. She volunteered at two organizations, court appointed special advocates for children and a domestic violence shelter. And notice that she provides details about her experience. And then next, here's an example of Career Services Senior Director Lisa Cook's volunteer experience on her LinkedIn profile. Notice that she provides details about her service. Under her volunteer position for Meals on Wheels, she states, helped with community relations and writing newsletter stories for this wonderful organization serving hot meals, warm smiles, and safety checks to homebound seniors. So she provides details about her volunteer service. You can also share your volunteer experience during interviews. Volunteering gives you the opportunity to have stories and experiences to share during the interview. In career services, we advise students to prepare stories about their accomplishments using the CART formula, challenge, action, result, and tie-in. I'd like to provide an example of a CART statement based on Walden Social Change Award recipient Chu Vang's experience, um, his experience starting the Hmong American Education Fund that Dr. Schultz um, spoke of. So the challenge that Chu identified was that First-generation Hmong students needed assistance with preparing for and financing college. The action he took was to start a nonprofit organization to offer scholarships and support to students in the Hmong community. The result is a growing nonprofit organization that offers multiple scholarships, advising, mentoring services, and opportunities to contribute to the Hmong community. Chu could share his accomplishments and tie it into a future role. That would be his next step. So next, Dina will interview our panelist, Dr. Tanya Renee Howard. Dina? Thank you, Denise. And welcome back to the program, Dr. Howard. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Howard, could you share how volunteering has helped you find your true passion and led to career advancement opportunities. Absolutely. So I actually started my career in the legal profession. And so while I was working at a local law firm here in Atlanta, I just decided to start volunteering at my church. And so um, I, I joined a team of people who literally were helping our church members to identify their interests, their um, skills, and assess their personality traits. Um, and this was to help them to get into a, a, um, a volunteer opportunity. And so in that position, I actually delivered workshops that helped me to develop my very own public speaking skills. And so after two years of volunteering in that position, the church then realized that they actually needed a full-time volunteer coordinator um, for their programs. And I, that's when I really realized that I really loved the field of volunteer management. And so they actually hired me to create and to implement a volunteer management program. And so that prompted me to leave the legal profession and then embark on a whole new career in volunteer management. Great. Thank you, Dr. Howard. Your volunteer experience helped you test out the waters, learn what you love to do, and led to a paid position in a new career field. 
while mm-hmm. pursuing, it sure did. Absolutely. And while pursuing your doctoral degree at Walden, you also started your own business and continued to seek out volunteering roles. Could you share your experience with us? Sure. So um, Walden actually expanded my knowledge um, and they gave me the confidence to actually start my own consulting business, as you said. And this is to help nonprofits to build a stronger volunteer program um, because there's so many nonprofits out there who are just um, uh, just bleeding for the knowledge and how to keep volunteers, which essentially makes their nonprofit run. And so at the same time, I took an interest in volunteering at Open Hand Atlanta, um, whose miss- mission is to help to prevent um, or manage the chronic disease through nutrition care. And so that particular volunteer experience helped me to hone in on my leadership skills as well as um, advocacy in health and wellness. And so I literally was hired there in 2014 as a volunteer services manager, and then I got promoted um, to an associate director position in 2015. And then at the top of 2016, the former director of volunteer services transitioned into a new role, and then her position opened up. And I was promoted yet again as the director of volunteer services, where I now manage, as Lisa mentioned, nearly 10,000 volunteers annually. So once again, to your point, volunteering for an organization can really help you to find um, paid employment and to advance, advance a career that you so love. So, yeah. And Dr. Howard, how have your volunteering roles helped support your personal mission and commitment to social change? So my personal mission is to actually become the number one go-to person in Atlanta for anything related to volunteer management. And so um, the volunteer roles that I've taken, it's actually helped me to support that mission build my, re- my reputation in the community as someone who is well knowledge in volunteer management and to also help um, local nonprofits stay vibrant and alive, if you will. And so, you know, I've lectured at universities and schools in Atlanta. I've trained some nonprofit organizations on volunteer management strategies through the um, Council of Volunteer Administrators, which is also a volunteer role for me. And then I recently completed a dissertation on developing generation-based volunteer management practices, which I hope to use as a resource for those nonprofit organizations here. And you also have an interesting story about how you landed a university lecture position. Could you share this story with us? Absolutely. So we actually had a volunteer, um, and she actually was an intern, now that I think about it, um, but of course a volunteer at Open Hand, and she was attending a local university here, and she invited me to speak as a guest lecturer. And so that actually led to additional lecturing at that particular university as well as um, speaking opportunities at other universities in Atlanta as well as online universities. So that was, that was networking was just beautiful. <laughs> and, and this story is also a great reminder of building connections with not only employees and supervisors, but also with um, volunteers since you just never know what new opportunities can potentially emerge through those connections. So thank you so much for sharing your experience, Dr. Howard. And as a volunteer program director, could you also share how your volunteers have used skills they've gained through volunteering for career advancement? Absolutely. So open hand. Most of our volunteer opportunities involve packing meals or delivering nutrition meals unless you're specifically in an internship program in a department. But we also, within those um, those departments, we provide many opportunities to gain leadership and communication skills, learn more about cultural awareness. Um, volunteers can facilitate orientations. They can train other volunteers. They come with us to work at volunteer fairs. Um, You know, one prime example, we actually have an ambassador program at Open Hand. And so we recently have created this new storytelling model. It's all about telling your story. And so one of our volunteer ambassadors, she's actually used her passion for acting to become that spokesperson for our model. We didn't have to look for anybody because she was already volunteering. And so... (laughs) That actual experience as being our spokesperson has gained her um, 
paid positions as an actress in the Atlanta community. Go figure. And so I'd like to share just one more example um, at the very start of my volunteer management career. So when I was the coordinator at my church, um, our volunteers could actually help with events. They could connect with vendors and corporations in our local community when we would you know, plan a large event. And so one um, volunteer, she actually landed a mentorship teaching opportunity that turned into a job as a director of an after-school program in that community. And she's very passionate about um, after-school programs. And so that was that link was just perfect, and it was all from her volunteering for an event that we had at the church. So it was incredible. These are great stories, Dr. Howard, and volu volunteering really does make a difference. And uh, I want to thank you for your insights and for sharing the impact that volunteering has had on your own career and also on the careers of your volunteers. And next, um, Denise will provide additional tips on how to find volunteering opportunities that are a good fit. Thank you, Dina, and thank you, Dr. Howard, for those great examples. Um, for volunteering to have the greatest impact on your career, be strategic in deciding which opportunity is a good fit for you. You want to determine your goals and purpose, your passions, interests, and values, what opportunities are available, and how much time you're able to commit. Think about the time commitment carefully. You don't want to overcommit and have to back out or become unreliable. So keep in mind that if you volunteer for just a few hours every week over a period of time, you'll be able to build relationships, gain experience to highlight on your resume, and have stories to talk about in interviews. Next, we're going to look at some resources to help you find the right fit. The Career Services Center website has extensive resources to help you with your career management. You can access the Career Services website from your My Walden Portal Academics tab or at careercenter.waldenu.edu. On our site, we have a series of archived webinars on social change, building blocks of starting a nonprofit organization, developing social entrepreneurs, and influencing others without formal authority. And you'll find these on the archived webinars blue button on the left side of our home page. And next, under the Resources tab on the General Volunteer Opportunities page, we have a list of sites where you can search for volunteer opportunities. And then next, you can also search for nonprofits under the Resources tab as well. So to access the list, click on By Sector and then Nonprofit. Um, next, we're going to take a closer look at some of the sites listed in these areas. Volunteer Match is one of the oldest and largest and most popular volunteer search sites, sites with over 100,000 volunteer opportunities listed including virtual volunteer opportunities. So if some of you are thinking, well, I'd like to volunteer, but there just aren't that many uh, opportunities in my community, there are virtual volunteer opportunities listed here to check out. Um, and they have an advanced search feature as well, so you can narrow your search by topics such as human rights, education, safety, or crisis support, to name just a few of the topics. Idealist.org has over 11,000 volunteer opportunities worldwide listed. A few examples of postings are disaster team member, conference planner, accountant, blood donor ambassador, and database assistant. I'll also mention that Idealist has job postings for positions that have a social impact. When I checked today, they had over 13,000 job postings listed. And then next, Points of Light has an interesting civic accelerator program where they offer guidance for people with ideas to help their communities. We know Walden students and alumni have great ideas to support their communities. So this organization may be a great place to go to for help with getting those ideas off the ground or to help others develop their ideas and enhance your skills in the process. 
Points of Light also hosts an annual conference on volunteering. The Hands-On Network is a popular site that allows you to search by topic and zip code. Their site also has an excellent professional skills matrix that helps you match skills with volunteer opportunities and activities. So, and then next, the Corporation for National and Community Service is a federal agency that operates Senior Corps, AmeriCorps, and FEMA Corps. And then next, the Citizen Corps is an initiative under the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to help coordinate volunteer activities to make communities safer, stronger, and better prepared to respond to an emergency situation. I worked with a Walden student in the Master of Healthcare Administration program who was able to successfully transition from banking to a paid position in healthcare administration through her volunteer work with the Citizen Corps. And she also received extensive free training as a volunteer for Citizen Corps as well. And then next, the United Nations has a variety of volunteer positions. Likualo, a Walden student in the PhD in Public Policy and Administration program with a specialization in health policy, is a UN international volunteer. She delivers HIV AIDS education, training and consultation to peacekeeping troops in the Republic of South Sudan. Her volunteer work fits with her academic program and her goal to expand her global impact and influence lasting change in developing countries. And you can read more about her story on the Career Services Center blog. So I hope you uh, read about her fascinating story. And then next, the United Nations also has virtual volunteer opportunities. And they currently have 265 opportunities listed. And for example, those postings include developing business plans for entrepreneurs and small businesses, and designing a newsletter for the World Health Organization. And then next, here are two sites the National Council of Nonprofits and GuideStar to help you search for nonprofit organizations that match your, val their, your values and interests. So some of those might be like the American Cancer um, Society or a lot of the healthcare associations. You can do searches to see what would be available there as well. And then next, there are a number of sites that offer international fee-based volunteering opportunities. My daughter went through a fee-based organization for the opportunity to tutor children of migrant workers for a month in India. I hope these sites and ideas get you started to think about the possibilities you have to make a positive impact on your community and on your career. So next, I'm going to turn it back to Lisa to field your questions. Great, thanks, Denise. Um, so I'm, the first question goes to um, Dina and Denise, and it comes from Jean. And basically, she stated that she has a wealth of volunteer experience. And what is the best way to present that on her resume? This is Dina, and, and I can start with this question. Um, the best way is to um, create a section on your resume called Volunteer Experience and um, list the title of your um, volunteer title and the um, organization, the date range, and then use bullet points to highlight key accomplishments that you achieved in that role. So thinking back, of, um, we talked about CART for interviewing, but for resumes, the acronym card challenge action and result so what was the challenge that you faced what was the action that you took and what was the result of your efforts and coming up with these uh, card statements or accomplishments can help future employers and your networking contacts understand what is it that you gained through your volunteer experience and in that process, your volunteer role transforms into strategic volunteering. 
And I'll also add that typically volunteering comes at the end of the resume, but if your volunteer experience is the most relevant experience you have for what you want to do next in your career, you can move that section up and you could have a brief summary and then you could have your volunteer experience and then you could have additional experience section. So it would just depend on, you know, if that's the most relevant experience for what you want to do next. Hi, this is Nicole. I'm going to add something else. So this is great. A whole team effort here. Um, also, just to add to that, those of you who want a visual picture, we did have a slide, for example, from Lisa Cook, our supervisor, her volunteer experience. Um, and that example will be on the PowerPoint on the website. And also what's really important is to add it to your LinkedIn profile. So it gives a more holistic view of who you are as a person and what your passions are. And um, as we're mentioning on this webinar, you can never underestimate the importance of volunteer positions and again, building your network. So it is kind of like a snowball effect, you know, add it to your LinkedIn profile, put your passions on there. Um, the bullet points, as Dina said, and then connect with people on LinkedIn who you meet through your volunteer positions. Great, thank you. Dr. Howard, you've generated quite a bit of buzz and interest in open hand, just so you know, because I have a number of oh. uh, participants in our audience who would like to know what's the best way to reach out to you to volunteer. Oh, my God, that's excellent. I will give you my direct line, actually. <laughs> you can call me. <laughs> okay. So, okay. is that okay? Yeah, if you feel, yes, that's okay. fine. Yeah, so my direct line is 404-419-3335. Great, thank you. Excellent. Um, another, that's great. I know you're going to get a lot of follow-up. Um, another question is, um, what is the best way to present religious volunteer service on one's resume? Denise, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, it would depend on what you've, you've done, but let's say, um, for example, uh, Tanya talked about her work at her church. That's where she started volunteering. So you would just list that under volunteering and then the organization and then the work that, that you did. Have some bullet points if it's relevant towards what you want to do to do next. So absolutely you can, you can put that on there. Um, and so what you'd want to do is think about, you know, again, what you've done, those activities. Use the CAR statement as well. The challenge, the action, and the result. And sometimes if it's, if it's a lot, um, if it's, if it's faith-based, if it's maybe, you know, teaching a certain religious, uh, faith, you might want to focus more on those teaching skills that you've gained from that position more so than the faith, unless there are exceptions to that because sometimes someone's applying for a paid position through a religious organization or maybe a college that's associated with a certain religion as well. But you want to think about that, your target um, position that you're applying for and then think about those, you know, what are those, those skills that you've gained through that position. Great. Thank you, Denise. Um, Dr. Schultz, Jean is very excited about the possibility that Walden might provide academic credit in the future for volunteer experience because she's heading off to Africa in the next few months and she's going to be um, handing out hygiene supplies to um, individuals over there. So she'd love to get uh, some academic credit for her, her activities like that. And um, in the meantime, she is a PhD public policy and administration student, um, and she doesn't have policy experience. She works in finance and has a lot of experience creating partnerships among grassroots organizations and developing relationships among stakeholders. Um, and she's wondering if anyone has any suggestions for her to gain some policy experience. There might be some virtual volunteer activities, I'm thinking, that might involve working on policy issues. Does anyone have any suggestions on that? Unfortunately, I don't, but uh, with respect to the academic credit issue, I do think, you know, what we are looking for is the ability to, to build in some service learning electives and or experiences that 
can help. It won't be quite as easy to do at the doctoral level as opposed to the master's level, but we're going to be trying to think outside the box so you can take your experiences, reflect on them in systemic ways, and uh, potentially earn, earn credit. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm seeing if we have any other questions. Um, and a lot of folks have asked, will the PowerPoint slides be available? Yes, this is being recorded, and we will have the full deck of PowerPoint slides available um, with the archive re recording on our website. Okay, so um, Frederica asked, Dr. Howard, how did you manage volunteering and working on your PPA in um, your PhD in PPA? Is Open Hand a part of your dissertation? Congratulations on your accomplishment. Thank you very much. I um, had a very good support group. <laughs> I can tell you that. But, um, you know, my being an open hand, I see all walks of life um, as far as uh, generations. And so it did spark my interest in understanding how in the world can we take advantage of the five living generations? Because we see people as young as three months, believe it or not, because they're with their parents delivering meals. They don't know, you know, they don't quite know what they're doing. But we see three months all the way up to 70-year-old volunteers. And so a lot of nonprofit organizations can't say that. And a lot of nonprofit organizations want to know how in the world do we engage all five living generations in order to create some type of intergenerational program. And so um, it did spark my interest in understanding, okay, how do we keep generation X, Y, Z, baby boomers, and um, the silent generation involved in volunteerism. So yes, that did spark my interest in my dissertation topic. Um, but like I said, I had a really good support system both at work and at home um, to get me through that process because it, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and Lean raises a good point, and um, obviously she's a fan of an organization that I'm also a fan of. Um, she asked if anyone has ever volunteered through um, meetup.com because they're always looking for volunteers for projects. She said that she's done a lake cleanup through canoe outings, um, you know, sewing for people in need. So that meetup has um, oftentimes volunteer organization. Um, organizations that host activities where you can do like a one-time volunteer opportunity. So thank you for sharing that, Eileen. Um, Jennifer suggests as far as getting policy experience, maybe Jean could volunteer for a legal organization. So um, that might be an interesting um, thing to consider. So it looks like that's about all our questions, actually. So thank you all very much. These were terrific. So I'm going to hand it back to Dina and Denise to wrap it up. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Um, so, so next, here's a list of references um, from today's webinar. And you'll be able to access a copy of the slides on the Career Services Center website and the archive webinars in approximately a week. So I just want to remind you about that. And then next, on our next slide, we invite you to connect with us by joining the Career Services LinkedIn group, follow us on Twitter, and um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and join us on Facebook. And then read Walden success stories on our blog. We have a number of great success stories uh, on our blog of students who have started volunteering and how the volunteering has led them to a paid uh, position. So check out the, the success stories. And then use the features on the Optimal Resume system. We have over 100 sample resumes in Optimal Resume for you to take a look at. And some of those samples also showcase volunteer experience um, related so as related to the question that came up like how do I put my volunteer experience on on the resume you can check out some of the samples in the optimal resume system and then also remember you can access all of our resources on our website careercenter.waldenu.edu